It's time for This Week in Research Papers. That's right, welcome to Twerp. And now here's your resident twerp, the study finds guy, Jeff Allen. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to get used to the name of the show. You know, it's better than what my wife calls me sometimes. <laughs> but seriously, in our top twerp countdown this week, we have stories about shopping more. Because of your coffee pour, tuna or salmon could keep your brain happening. Having the talk makes some parents walk. But for now, it's all about how they found crazy ancient people buried with eyeliner and earwax removers. <laughs> I'm serious. I threw in the crazy part. Well, I can call them crazy, can't I? What are they going to do? Haunt me? <laughs> Worse yet, sue me? <laughs> it sounds kind of gross, and it probably is. So, kids, let this be a lesson to you. When doing that archaeological dig, you never know what you're going to touch. So, don't put it in your mouth. Good advice on a lot of things. You're seeing images from the dig from HS2 Limited. Ooh, that one looks kind of like a Cheerio. I might have to put that one in my mouth. <laughs> yes, archaeologists have discovered hundreds of items buried with wealthy Anglo-Saxons. Experts say they found the grave goods after excavating 141 burial sites in Wendover, Buckinghamshire. That's northwest of London for those of you plotting it on a map. The artifacts range from jewelry and beads to swords, shields, and spears, all buried with the dead. Interestingly, the resting places also contain personal hygiene kits, including the earwax removers and aforementioned toothpicks and tweezers and such and whatnot. This goes to my theory that I think people have two reasons for doing this, and here's how the conversation sounds. The first one, I don't want all of this shit, just throw it in a casket. Or my favorite, number two. Hey, let's put all this crap in here and people years from now will dig it up and think we were nuts. <laughs> Researchers even found brooches, combs, and cosmetic tubes that may have contained the substance thought used as eyeliner. The site is one of the largest Anglo-Saxon burial grounds unearthed in Great Britain. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm still washing my hands. Today's eyeliner may have been yesterday's hemorrhoid treatment, so... <laughs> And now moving on from ancient revealing things to mutant STDs. A new gonorrhea strain may make that STD untreatable. This is not good news and it comes out of Sweden and was first detected in a man in Austria after he displayed symptoms of gonorrhea in April of 2022 after having unprotected sex with a female sex worker in Cambodia. Gee, how could such a thing occur? <laughs> and that was surprisingly specific. All right, so on a production side note, we're probably not going to have a lot of B-roll video on this one, okay? A team with the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control says the strain is resistant to current options doctors prescribe to treat gonorrhea, including azithromycin. It was also resistant to ceftrioxone, cefixim, you know, they always give me these tough ones to say, cefixim, cefixime, Cefixime, I'll put it on the screen. Cefotaxime, ciprofloxacin, that one I know, and tetracycline. They're calling the strain drug-resistant Neosierra gonorrhea for those of you taking notes. Without getting deep into the description, if left untreated, the infection can result in infertility for the carrier. Now, from a penetrating problem to a caffeinated conundrum, at least for the person who has to pay the bill. <laughs> A cup of coffee before shopping may lead a person to spend more money. <laughs> coffee and credit cards may be a financial planner's worst nightmare, according to researchers from the University of South Florida. Scientists report shoppers who sip on a complimentary cup of coffee before shopping ended up spending 50% more money and buying 30% more items than their non-caffeinated counterparts. Wait, I'm just getting this in. What? I'm sure as a coincidence, 90% of retailers just began serving free coffee. <laughs> I kid. Lead study author Dipien Biswas, the Frank Harvey endowed professor of marketing at U.S. Wait, okay. Not trying to be culturally inappropriate here. This is really a reflection on me, but I can never get a name to pronounce like Frank Smith or Ed Jones. <laughs> it's always a toughie that shows my ignorance, but I digress. Biswas said, quote, 
Caffeine, as a powerful stimulant, releases dopamine in the brain, which excites the mind and body. This leads to a higher energetic state, which in turn enhances impulsivity and decreases self-control. As a result, caffeine intake leads to shopping impulsivity in terms of higher number of items purchased and greater spending. <laughs> I better check the coffee before she heads out next time. I wonder if this is the same as drunk shopping online. <laughs> That's really dangerous. Yeah, I've heard from other people. To reach these findings, researchers set up an espresso machine at the entrances of retail chains and home goods stores in France, as well as a department store in Spain. Here's a picture of the actual setup, and I would bet that those are still there today. <laughs> Moving on from the dangers of Java to the greatness of tuna. Eating more salmon or tuna can slash Alzheimer's risks in half. Wow, great news for those of you fishing for a way to avoid dementia. Let's see what I did there, fishing. Well, okay, time for the spinning video of food there. We get a lot of those. Scientists with the Fatty Acid Research Institute, coincidentally the name of a rock band I was in in college. Scientists there are say dropping a line may be just what you need or going to the store if you're not much about catching fish yourself in the water. Word from the smart people there is people with high amounts of omega-3 fatty acid, DHA, are 49% less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease in the future than those with low DHA levels in their blood. The findings reinforce the importance of eating foods such as tuna, salmon, and walnuts, all are high sources of omega-3 DHA. Alzheimer's, of course, is the most common form of dementia and sucks the bag. We've all been touched by it, whether family or friends, and any progress on this front is great news. This latest study supports past evidence linking the importance of omega-3 DHA to brain health. Now, if you want to avoid this next issue, keep up with your omega-3. In a related story, altruism in older adults could be an early sign of Alzheimer's disease. A new study has found a link between older adults who are more willing to give away money and cognitive decline. A team from the Keck School of Medicine at USC discovered that even seniors with no signs of dementia performed noticeably worse on cognitive tests if they gave more money to an anonymous person during a lab experiment. Researchers believe their findings could explain the apparent connection between older adults falling for financial scams and cognitive impairment later in life. Although prior studies have tried to examine this potential link between altruism or generosity and brain health, the new report went a step further by using real money in the experiment. Study authors gathered 67 adults who had an average age of 69. None of them had any signs of dementia at the start of the experiment. During the experiment, researchers paired each senior with an anonymous person Participating in the study online, the seniors also received $10 that they could distribute between themselves and their online partner. Results show older participants who gave more of the $10 to their anonymous partner scored significantly lower on the neuropsychological tests which scan for Alzheimer's disease. The team says larger and more representative samples are really necessary to confirm their findings, and I do hope they find an answer to this god-awful disease. On a side note, I keep sending money to Washington, D.C. every April 15th, and they have no trouble giving that away. Might need to check something there, either me or them. I kid. Sort of. <laughs> okay, moving on. Sure have a lot of aging-related studies this week, and the fish seem to be coming to the rescue again in this next one. Skin from popular fish may hold the key to preventing wrinkles. Science may have discovered the fish of youth. Screw that stupid fountain. Can't find the damn thing anyway. <laughs> Stupid fountain. Researchers from Oregon State University say gelatin found in the skin of Pacific whiting, an abundant fish along the Pacific coast, may just hold the secret to a youthful looking skin. <laughs> and I bet the odor is a hit at parties too. Okay, these guys are beautiful. Here they are. <laughs> it's a picture from NOAA, the government agency, not the Ark Builder, although he probably had at least two of them. <laughs> oh, wait. It was a flood. He probably didn't have the fish on board on account of they can swim. Where was I? Oh, anywho, scientists say the Pacific whiting skin may help prevent skin wrinkling due to ultraviolet radiation. For this study, researchers analyzed skin wrinkles in response to chronic ultraviolet light exposure. All that UV light breaks down the skin's collagen. 
Then they extract a gelatin from a group of Pacific whiting fish and observe the gelatin's influence on human cell samples in a lab. This process led to a number of noteworthy findings. It reactivated the collagen synthesis pathway suppressed by UV radiation to a certain degree. It prevented activation of the collagen degradation pathway that UV radiation accelerates. It promoted additional antioxidant activity, which helps to prevent and slow down cell damage. It also promoted extra anti-inflammatory effects. And it stunk like low tide in Key West on an August afternoon. <laughs> okay, I threw that last one in but I lived it. <laughs> Not so sure I would be rubbing a Pacific whiting on my face before bedtime just yet, as in many of these studies, scientists say more research is needed. We'll tell you when to sleep with the fishes. Okay, well, from will the fish work to a bunch of soda jerks. <laughs> An alternative soda hack that's trending on TikTok will erode your teeth, a study warns. Good news for the dental industry, though, a video claiming that the mix of balsamic vinegar and flavored sparkling water creates a healthier alternative to soda that already has over 6.3 million views on the social media platform TikTok may just make your teeth fall out of your mouth like grandpa biting into a taffy apple. <laughs> Researchers from the American Dental Association warn that adding acids to sugar-free beverages will likely result in some major tooth enamel erosion. Dr. Edmund Hewlett, a spokesperson for the American Dental Association, said, quote, I love balsamic vinegar, but I enjoy it more on my salad than in my drinking glass. It's much kinder to the teeth than bathing them in a beverage blend of two acids. The more acidic the drink, the greater the risk of tooth erosion with frequent consumption. <laughs> and the more money I make. I kid. I threw that part in, but I know I'm not wrong. Fun fact, kids, acidic foods and drinks can break down the enamel protecting your teeth. This process is known as tooth erosion and it's permanent. Once erosion occurs, there's no going back, leaving teeth much more vulnerable to cavities and infection, causing bacteria. So unless you plan on being a zombie stunt double for the rest of your life, stop it. Now this, good news for the pooch, is good news for you when it comes to a possible lung cancer treatment. That is, lung cancer treatments for dogs may also work on humans with deadly tumors. See, who said the dogs weren't man's best friend? Thanks to our four-legged friends, researchers from the University of California Davis Health have found a specific protein in the body that could create more effective immunotherapies. The protein would help trigger the immune system to better respond to and eliminate cancer. The clinical study involved 21 pet dogs who developed metastatic lung disease from bone or skin cancer. The team treated dogs with the cytokine interleukin-15, or IL-15, which scientists believe benefits immunotherapy. However, IL-15 treatments in humans are sparse because some doses carry very high toxicity risks. Robert J. Cantor, a canine oncologist and chief of the UC Davis Division of Surgical Oncology, that's him right there, said, quote, no one previously had administered IL-15 as an inhaled treatment in dogs to deliver it directly to the site of the cancer. We came up with that idea as a means of reducing exposure to the rest of the body in order to improve the benefit-risk ratio to improve the immune-stimulating effects and to reduce toxicity. Cantor said they used interleukin-15 to reinvigorate the immune system to make it recognize the cancer cells that had evaded the immune system and eliminate the bastards. <laughs> Stupid cancer. <laughs> that last part was me. The overall response rate was near 40%. The tumors of two dogs shrank dramatically and one went into remission for over a year. Okay, now here we go from dogs over cancer to mind over matter. How much do you believe in yourself? Well, it matters more than age when pursuing a new skill or hobby. For this one, we're going to reach back in the Study Finds archives from, oh, 24 hours ago when I was still fighting acne and getting my head shoved in the locker room toilet. Let's take a look, shall we? One common belief is that the older you get, the tougher it is to master something new. Research from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, <laughs> however, finds that it's actually the level of motivation you have to push yourself that really can help you succeed. Now, wait, I thought it was sleeping at a 
Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> I kid. But seriously, perhaps when the company you work for for years decides you're no longer needed, you can put that energy into maybe doing what the kids do these days and make it big on YouTube. Now, who would do such a thing? Moving on. Scientists say that women in particular are able to overcome stubbornness that can temper motivation or self-confidence in old age. And is that code for men are stubborn? <laughs> Let's read on and see what the study finds. Hermunder Sigmundsen, a professor of psychology at the Norwegian University of Science, said, quote, We wanted to see how the passion, grit, and belief that you'll succeed at getting better, your growth mindset, change with age and in relation to gender. Now, researchers say that as people get older, they tend to accept life as it gets tougher with age, say spending more time on the couch rather than trying that new thing you may have wanted to try. Researchers suggest the biggest barrier is not age, but a person's fixed mindset that they only possess a certain amount of intelligence or skills you know, while you may not become a world champion at snowboarding, your proficiency will increase if you keep at it and do not give up. Okay, wait. Stop here. <laughs> Just don't write me and say that your 95-year-old grandparents started snowboarding and sailed off a cliff because of me. Check with your doctor before trying anything that you think could stretch the limits of your physical ability. Where was I? Sigmundson said it's important to maintain a growth mindset. You can't stop believing in growth even though you're getting older. In other words, don't stop believing. You know, hold on to that feeling. It seems like so long ago. Well, from tips to stay young to my kids are on their own, <laughs> we're at number one. One in five parents say they'll never have the talk with their kids. <laughs> well, then keep that house with the extra room in it because you might be raising a grandkid. For many parents, talking about the birds and the bees is part of life for adolescents. For others, they'll just leave it to their child's school to teach them about human reproduction because they're doing so well with the reading, writing, and arithmetic, right? <laughs> According to a recent study, 6 in 10 American parents say they were raised to think of sex as taboo. 2,000 parents with kiddos between 5 and 18 were asked to examine their own views about sex, including how they've addressed the topic with their kids. 58% said they had already spoken to their children about biblical relations. 21% plan to do so in the future. However, the same percentage, 21%, don't plan to bring it up at all. Like I said, do so at your own peril. <laughs> at least almost 80% say they will, so that's good. 26% admit they would feel awkward while having conversations about the matrimonial polka with their children. Well, yeah. <laughs> but regardless of those feelings, 7 in 10 agree the birds and the bees talk should happen at an early age, specifically because of how often kids are exposed to similar topics on social media and in other parts of daily life. I think that's always been there. Respondents were also asked if their parents educated them about sex when they were younger. 47% said they received some form of the sex talk, but another 30% never broached the subject. Well, there you go, your twerp update. I tear up every time we get to the end. Yeah. I, I mean, I tear up the script. I mean, it's a lot of reading. It's like getting homework. <laughs> I, I kid. This is fun, and remember, this has been This Week in Research Papers. You can check out more info on this and other studies by clicking in the link in the description below and head over to studyfinds.com. 